what I was hoping to do today was just to give um, a little bit of an overview on uh, everyone kind of understands what multi-touch is in a, in a sense where you, you just can receive your applications can receive raw multi-touch events where where each finger is or whatever. Uh, we have some requirements as we want to do gestures for X um, to basically make that work, uh, not only in individual applications, but also on a system level. And so I was going to basically hit upon uh, what we're looking at for X and uh, grabbing mechanisms and, and things like that. Um, yeah, real quick, there's a little bit of background. Um, uh, Peter Hunter proposed a new protocol that would support multi-touch effects a while back. And as a result of our work on new touch and chases, explorations of implementations that might be able to um, address some of this, Peter Hunter actually form formalized this in a full spec. And so that's the topic of this discussion is what is that spec, where is it going, and how, how are we going to make that happen? Just yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm not going to pull up the spec specifically because it's long, boring, and everything. Uh, but right now, the state of multi-touch in Linux is that we have multi-touch drivers coming out of the kernel uh, with multi-touch events. But the X server, even though it can receive these events, it doesn't have any way to send them through itself to get to the applications, uh, to anyone who's running on top of X. There's some libraries uh, that, uh, like I think PyMT uh, and, and some other libraries here and there, that will take the multi-touch events from the kernel directly and so the application can get them a little bit. The problem is that they don't know where they exist within the X window hierarchy. So they don't know if they're on top of other windows, if they should be handling them or not, or others. Uh, so we really have to get good multi-touch support through X. Uh, if you There's another reason, which is that uh, if all applications are reading directly from the device driver, the moment that you touch the screen, all applications wake up. Mm -hmm. Horrible for battery power. Yep, yep. That's a good point. Yeah, so uh, uh, it's obvious that basically we need to get multi-touch through X. So about a year, a half year, a year ago, people started to look into this and uh, kind of floundered around a little bit as we were trying to figure out what, what was going on, how to do it properly. And we realized that you know, we probably need to do a re-architecture or, or an extension of the X input layer to truly support uh, multi-touch properly. Uh, essentially, what you would see as an application developer or a toolkit developer, uh, when there's full multi-touch support, is you would subscribe to multi-touch events. And as it's proposed right now, you would see uh, events come in when someone starts a touch, and then you get a different type of event that occurs when that touch is moving, and then you get a third event when the touch ends. And you, so you get a stream of these events with different IDs for different touches as they're occurring across the screen. So that's great for things like, uh, you know, if you have Inkscape or GIMP and you want to do like finger painting and everything. Uh, we also want to be able to do gestures. And uh, there's this interplay between, like if I want to do, you know, a, a two finger drag down on a, a, a scrollable object, like a, a text view. Uh, the application wants to see those, translate them into like a scroll. Uh, but if I do like a three finger swipe, the window manager, like Unity, might want to intercept that and create it as a, uh, uh, an alt tab, for, for example. So how do we implement the X layer such that the window manager can intercept these multi-touch events, do gesture processing, see if it cares about them. If it does, it should consume these events and not allow the application to use them. If it doesn't, then it should allow the events to continue on to the applications. Although in the way that I'm describing it, it sounds in sort of a serial fashion, in the sense of the window manager would receive events, would do a bunch of gesture processing, then it would come back and uh, say whether it should send events, whether the server should send events onto the applications. Then they would go and do their own processing. 
that might give us a hit of uh, UI latency. And so, how do we handle that? Well, maybe we can send events. We, we can do interesting things there that I'm going to get into today. Um, so, first of all, are there any questions on, on the background of, of what I mentioned? <coughs> So with that, I guess, um, take a look at the, the Gabi doc. Um, that first link at the top is a link to a, a Google document of a, a block diagram, essentially. And so, and, and again, if anyone has any issues bringing this up uh, and, and needs some help, uh, let us know. Um, so this is a, a proposed architecture um, of how we can perform uh, multi-touch and gesture recognition uh, through X and in applications and we use Unity as a placeholder for your window manager system-wide uh, uh, gesture recognizer and, and action handler. So essentially we have kernel spitting out these multi-touch events. There's this little thing called MTDev which turns your, your touches uh, that for some devices they may be raw touches that just tell you point here, point here, point here, point here. And MTDev will track those as it goes along. So it can say, touch one, touch two, touch three, touch four. And when you see motion events, it, it, it tells you which one was moving. It's, it just makes it easier. Those get passed into the X server, where, uh, as I mentioned before, you coming out of the X server, you get some of these multi-touch events that would tell you when touches began, when they moved, when they ended. These multi-touch events would then go to your system-wide application like Unity and to applications themselves. And often case, they're going to be interpreted directly by the toolkit, although of course we have the APIs, so if someone really wanted to, um, they can code at our uh, uh, GAIS API level. The toolkit's gonna send some of these multi-touch events to this GAIS API, and that's our that's sort of our, uh, our mechanism for maintaining a stable API, even if the implementation details underneath change. Uh, so Geis, in this proposal, would take these multi-touch events and it would send them on to Grail, the gesture recognizer. And the gesture recognizer would uh, decide whether you know, there are these gestures or not and send some of these gesture events back to uh, guys back to the toolkit and then where an action can be performed by the, by the application. Uh, in previous models, uh, for those who have seen this, uh, this uh, similar architecture diagram before, uh, we thought about having Grail as just a library that's loaded by every client that wants to, every application that wants to interpret gestures. Uh, but we realized that in the future there may be cases where um, software like, say, Skype uses QT that might want to use uh, gesture recognition for whatever they do, uh, they often statically link against libraries. So having these disparate statically linked versions of the gesture recognizer would not give us conducive and, and necessarily performant environment. So we switched this around just a little bit so that Grail is now uh, communicate over an IPC mechanism, uh, maybe a, a DBus peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, which could hopefully be fast enough for, for what we're uh, doing. We just talked about this, so uh, any, any IPC mechanism you can throw in for that uh, so that it works fast enough and uh, doesn't have a new latency hit. Um, uh, like we're starting to get too much into the into the U-Touch architecture. Yeah. Uh, let's focus on uh, Xorg itself and, yeah, yeah. and the protocol that. So that kind of gives a hint of how multi-touch events go through the stack. Uh, the next uh, link in the Gabi document will help give an overview of uh, how X needs to handle these events in conjunction with the window manager and the applications uh, in Grail uh, to give an idea of how complicated, unfortunately, that it is, but also at the same time that we can do this uh, method for uh, you know, multiple applications and system-wide uh, clients <coughs> handling gestures properly. 
Uh, so I just want to I want to step through this to give people an idea of the sequence of events. So first, we're just going to assume that you have this multi-touch hardware. It gives you these uh, two fingers uh, in a scrollable region um, that maybe a toolkit provided, and these two fingers, the, the two touches, are going to be sent simultaneously, as currently proposed, to the window manager uh, to handle system-wide gestures and to the application. And uh, it goes to the correct application based on where the fingers occurred on screen, you know, which window it was in, and everything. The window manager and the application in parallel, they're going to send the this multi-touch uh, events to Grail uh, over this uh, IPC bus. Grail is going to essentially decide are there gestures there or not. Uh, in this instance, we're going to assume that it was a two-finger drag. So it's supposed to be a scroll. So the, it's not a system-wide uh, uh, gesture. It's an application-specific gesture. So in step five, Grail tells the Unity window manager hey, this is not something you're interested in. It's not like a three or four finger gesture or whatever. And the Unity window manager then tells X uh, that, uh, oh, I, I need to back up a little bit here. When X is sending events originally, uh, step two and step three, um, X sends it to the window manager and says, uh, you know, the window manager has grabbed, has to grab these events, so the window manager has the right to do things with this. But if is the window manager actually different from the X perspective than any other client? It's not. It okay. just happened to call a pass and grab on, um, on the device. So the Unity window manager, it has this pass and grab. It has the right to the events. But events are also sent to other applications. But they have a flag that says, someone else has a, has a grab on these, so you can't use them fully right now. Maybe you can do some UI hinting. Maybe you can do some gesture propagation or, or uh, processing in parallel. But don't take any irreversible actions based upon them. So going back to step five, Grail says to the window manager, this is not a gesture that you're interested in. And the window manager then says to X, OK, I know I passively grabbed for these touches, but really, they're not for me. So the, the, uh, the X server then goes to the application and says, OK, that guy who was grabbing it, he, he's cool with this. He says that he's not going to handle it. So you can now do your own processing for the, and handle these, these touches. So in parallel, while that X stuff is going on, Grail also mm -hmm. communicates to the application and tells it, hey, it was a two-finger drag, and I know you're interested in that. So they, between seven and eight, the application is kind of sitting there waiting for, to get communication back from the X server saying, yeah, you can now do stuff with these events, or no, you, you can't. Someone else is doing something. Once it gets that communication in step eight from the X server that, yeah, you can handle these events, then it does its scroll motion. So it gets a smiley face. Um, so first, are there any questions about this? I, I have another diagram on the opposite case, which is where it is a, a window manager or a system-wide gesture. Um, so, so first, any, any questions about this? So when the user knows the, the timeout period, like the um, window manager doesn't accept that question? Yeah, there's a, there's a, a latency issue here. Um, part of it is mitigated by uh, how you handle the user interface. So for example, uh, if you're trying to recognize uh, a, a drag versus a rotate uh, versus a pinch. If you put two fingers down on the screen, and if you just hold them there, the gesture recognizer is going to be like, I don't know if this is yet. It's going to have to wait for a time. It's going to be a little latency. But in general, what people are going to do is they, they want to drag. So they're going to touch down and start dragging. As soon as you start seeing that drag, you don't have to wait for a timeout. You just immediately go. And all these events will just waterfall through immediately. Uh, for the cases where uh, a user may, might not be sure, so they start out, they're, they're touching the screen, 
and this timeout period is starting. Uh, because all the clients and the window manager are receiving these events, they can look at it and, and the, the gesture recognizer can maybe do some tentative gesture processing uh, to tell you it may still be this event, I'm not sure yet. So maybe you can present in the UI uh, a way of saying, if you do a drag, you know, visually it, it gives you some indication that if you do a drag, it's going to start scrolling. Or if you do a pinch, it's going to start zooming. Uh, I don't have strong UI abilities, so I don't know how that would look or anything. But that's another way that, that uh, uh, latency can be mitigated a little bit. It can be used to educate the user as to what they do. And it's mitigated also by an action being performed right off the bat. Just that it's small, small bit. Uh, the actual action, uh, the actual, yeah, the actual action will be executed after the delay. But the user will get the idea that something is going on by the feedback. By the feedback, because all applications, all clients will get uh, those raw, like maybe touch events uh, at the same time. So, for example, in case of the two finger drug, it might be two finger drug, or if it is like a tap and hold or two finger click to show a context menu. So the user might already get some kind of feedback showing like a glowing circle, whatever, something is going on. And only the actual action, when the user releases his fingers or starts moving, only that actual action will be executed after a tiny delay. So yeah. How does that uh, react to the global system gestures? Because imagine that you have two fingers on the screen, you start dragging, then you touch a third finger, and the window manager starts to act on this. Should this happen? Is there a way to prevent uh, the window manager from re recognizing something because it's already been recognized as something else? Um, this gets a little bit more into the gesture processing. Uh, but one thing we've been looking at is that a, uh, a gesture primitive, as we like to, to think, we like to call them, at least in our team, uh, a primitive meaning it's a, it's a drag, a pinch, or rotate, not like a series of gestures. Uh, a primitive may be defined as an initiation and a continuation state. So, uh, for example, if you want to do a scroll, and, and this isn't not something that's been designed or anything, I'm just throwing this out. Um, maybe we initiate that with two fingers, but if you go down to one finger, since you've initiated with two, it's still a drag and it's still interpreted as a scroll. And so that's still the same uh, gesture that some of the semantics are a little different, but in a sense you can control that in how you subscribe to and, and uh, uh, handle your gesture processing. So an application, if you start with two fingers and you put a third finger down, it could continue, it, depending on if it says, you know, a continuation can be performed with three fingers, it can continue to do whatever it was doing with two fingers, or maybe it goes into a new mode and does something different with three fingers. Um, I don't think we'll get into the case where you've started something, you haven't lifted up your fingers, and then all of a sudden you put another finger down and it goes to a completely different application and does something completely different. It's probably possible given how we've architected it, but it probably wouldn't be good UI design. Yeah, I agree with you it wouldn't be a good UI design, but is there any way that the application can tell the window manager, now I'm handling this, so even if you have a system gesture which is three finger based, don't do it? Is this feedback from the application onto the system uh, architected? Um, so isn't that what we want to do? Isn't, that, isn't it describing exactly what we were talking about? Yeah, I mean, basically, I, I think... But would, wouldn't that be more of an issue of the gesture decider? The client gives the feedback, I'm done, and then yeah. the events get treated as a fresh stream, to some extent. or. Yeah. There, there could be other yeah. states, but I'm actually wondering if what Tiago is getting at is if I'm if I'm doing a two finger gesture and I accidentally touch with a third finger. Is that what you're talking about? No, that accidentally or not. The point is that I was doing a gesture with two fingers and then somehow I triggered a window <coughs> manager gesture. Is there any way that the application can tell the system I am handling this, so therefore it's not supposed to be handled as a window manager gesture? Is this even uh, 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 this link from the application back into the window manager okay. possible architecture. <coughs> I'm not saying it's going to be needed, but I'm not, asking. It probably should not be linked to the window manager, but to uh, gaze to, to Grail. 
and say that I, I'm, uh, I'm done, I recognize the gesture, so stop recognizing everything else. Yeah, I think there's something we can do with this. Uh, since Grail, in, in what we're proposing right now, is its own separate instance, a, a service, it can have this state to know that an application is doing things with these two fingers. So when a third finger comes in, even if the window manager says, oh, I've seen three fingers now, mm -hmm. Grail will say, oh, that's, that's great, but I'm sorry, this application is already doing the gesture with these fingers. Mm -hmm. And so, but in this case, you're thinking of a, a service somewhere yes. that uh, is sort of responsible for receiving, receiving and processing the, the, the gestures. Yes, um, that's where in the, uh, the architecture block diagram, uh, Grail exists in this sort of like cloud above. That's, that's one service instance, like a daemon sitting mm -hmm. in, in, uh, on a computer. Okay. So there's a question. I was going to part of the discussion on IRC that people wanted, somebody wanted to bring up the idea that um, that we of incorporating like things like double clicks, not only you know the time between when you put your finger down and start moving it, but also the time between you know when you release one click and start another or something like that. Is that those are the sort of thing where they can be useful concrete <coughs> case studies that we already know how to deal with when we're looking at how the architecture applies to uh, the new stuff that we're working on. There are a couple of things there yeah, because I mean when you're clicking something, it's not truly really an issue if it's window manager or not. Because you're not going to have a situation where clicking something once is going to be the application and clicking something twice is going to be the window manager. I agree with you, it should be. But, yes, but, but there's applications like drawing programs where you have different input devices. So GIMP might recognize your digitizer, your pen, whereas it's not treated as a normal input device. So yes, to some extent, the difference between two and four fingers can be treated. I'm just saying that if you try to compare this to mouse clicks, you don't have the problem of either bit application or window manager because it's so easy to tell if this mouse click belongs to the window manager or the application. So it's but that, that depends issue. on where you touched, right? On where you clicked. If you click on the status, uh, the decorations. Yeah. It's a window manager, it's yeah. that we're actually the application, regardless of how fast you double click or if you double click with your left hand or not. I understand, but what, but what we're facing here is a world where most applications are full screen. And how do you trigger window manager gesture? We don't have a keyboard, so we can't grab a key, and we don't have the decoration shown, so how can I trigger the gesture? And the, the, what if the ideas I've been hearing are, uh, let's do three or four finger events. So if you touch with four fingers into a full swipe like this, it would go back to the home screen or something like that. And, yeah. But uh, you never touch the four fingers at the same time on the screen. Right? There's a delay between your four fingers happening on the screen. And uh, this, uh, the question is, if you're, uh, if you're one by one, at one, the point, one point, you recognize the window manager gesture. So you're talking about startup tele. More or less, but yes, that, that could be one, for example. So if you start with two and then decide to go to four, it's not the same thing as if you do like this, the, the four fingers at once. So isn't that maybe more, this is the one of the ways. Isn't that more a topic for a talk about the architecture of you touch on that stuff? Because yes. I think yeah, uh, that's getting what you're question. actually talking about here is about the X or the limitation. So, okay. Getting so. back to X, uh, you were talking about tentative events yeah. and indicating to the user that <coughs> You, the application knows that you're doing something and it's just kind of waiting. It seems to me that the primary purpose of tentative events, at least in my mind, is to hide that latency from the user, to let the application yeah. start responding as if it knows it's doing it. Yeah. In we that case, an indicator that this is tentative is doing the exact opposite. It's bringing that latency to the user's attention. So it's, That's not exactly the case because it's, it's not about there are, very, there are many cases where the UI might require a delay. So the tap and hold is a good example. Uh, when you're tapping, you don't know whether, if there is an indication around your finger, for example, that something's happening, you know that that is the case. But another example is uh, one case which we have very, very common, which is that you have a button inside a scrollable area. And you touch the button, the button starts to glow, and then you move your finger down. That is no longer a tap, it's actually a scroll. Okay. So that is, yeah. You, you, so you had to have the first delivery, which is something might it might be it might be the start of a tap, 
but the tap is only when you remove your finger from the screen. Right? That's when the button, button activates. But instead what happened was that you got a tentative event. It might be a tap, but we're not sure yet. And what, when you moved your finger down, it's definitely no longer a tap. It was uh, a scroll. So but you have to have the UI the, reacting. This is why we leave it to the application, because each action, like a PDF scroll, you can easily yeah. just yeah. scroll PDF yeah. or whatever. Yeah. A tap is not, not a, a touch event, though. A tap is a gesture that's interpreting the touch begin. Yes. X, yes. X should just be concerned about touch begin and touch end, yes. not about interpreting the touch. Yeah, so the architecture that we have in Qt is like this. The touch event is you get a touch begin, you get touch update, as long as there's one finger on the screen, it doesn't have to be the, the original one, and then touch end when all fingers have been removed. And so this is this is how the architecture works. And on top of that, we have the gestures. Mm -hmm. right. And basically, the Peter Parker proposal is exactly that, except that there is one more additional event that is sent to all clients when a new uh, touch point appears on the screen. To indicate like if, you, if any of the clients wants to specifically passively drop that new <coughs> touch point separately of all of the events, all of other touch sequences touch points. So has this actually been added to the 2.1 uh, protocol? Or, uh, yeah. No. I don't think anyone's actually written it up in the. No, I think well, I think it was in the original oh, 2.1 draft. Oh, okay. Touch sequence. Uh, Oh well, yeah, oh, touch sequence event. Yeah. Right, but what about the tentative event support? Yeah, the tentative events, like this this passive grabbing mechanism, it hasn't been formally written up by anyone. Not that I'm aware of, at least. Mm -hmm. That's a grab mechanism? Well, yeah. Peter Hutter has quite an explicit, quite like a uh, long description of how grabs should be in the Yeah, but he up. has it. It's not like complete. Yeah, he had it originally written as a serial thing. So it's not like you're sending it out to everyone who. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah it's not. Yeah, it's not right, tentative. Right. It's yeah, serial. Okay. Yeah, I thought that his past approach didn't quite sound. Yeah, like yeah. Tentative events that we've discussed. We we've had a lot of discussions back and forth. Uh, Peter, myself, uh, and Henrik in particular on our uh, multi-touch uh, dev mailing list uh, about this issue. Um, and it's just it's just not been formally written up, but we all kind of feel that it's probably the best way to at least attempt to go at first until we get a brick wall. Um, yeah. Can I change the subject a little bit? I'm um, wondering about the information which comes um, attached to a cursor. So you've got multiple points which are being touched at any point in time, um, and you're given an XY coordinate to the application and just to recognize that we don't or whatever wants them. Um, have you considered input direction vectors instead of just having x, y coordinates? So as you put a finger down, the vector is like zero degrees and there's no acceleration on it, but as you start to move, it gives you an angle and an acceleration factor for where the cursor is moving and how fast it's moving. So that's what our, um, you can subscribe to single finger drags, for example, in our gesture recognizer, and you get that data. So you're, you're actually getting this angle and velocity instantaneous you're, velocity. Well, you're getting, you, yeah, yeah, you're not sorry. getting a full velocity vector in a sense. You're getting uh, a movement, but you do get a lot, you do get speed. Because yeah, one of the problems with writing like uh, many things in touch applications and things like that is having to calculate the velocity and the direction every time on the application on the widget level. So yeah. having that somewhere else is very, very important. I also think, you know, and, and uh, we had a, a discussion about this, and we kind of left it because we didn't have time to look at it again. Uh, but I think there may be something as well to uh, kind of getting at what you're getting at is uh, uh, there's different mathematical models you can use to represent movement as well. And depending on what your application is like, uh, maybe you want the same type of gesture, but the math and how it, it, the, the data you're given is calculated in different ways, vectors and things like that. We can cover that in more detail in the, in the API discussions. Yeah. 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 I don't know if this is implied in what we've been saying, but what we knew was going into the next so is it well, I'm unclear as to what we <coughs> Yeah, so to, to emphasize that, let's give a summary of what uh, the X2.1 protocol are. Yeah, um, the X2.1 protocol essentially will be giving uh, It'll give you the ability to subscribe to touch events, uh, just like there are currently pointer motion events and keyboard events. And those events will give you uh, a begin, a uh, motion, and an end for each touch. 